Well, guess who decides to comment on Senator Al Franken, who yesterday apologized for sexual misconduct before he became a United States Senator. Well, Thursday night, Donald Trump, who has said nothing, absolutely nothing about Roy Moore being accused of messing with a 14-year-old girl, Trump decided to go after Al Franken. This is what he tweeted. The Al Frankenstein picture is really bad. It speaks a thousand words. Where do his hands go in pictures two, three, four, five, and six while she sleeps? Mmm, really? Okay. Uh, this is the same Donald Trump, of course, who was caught on tape. You can hear him saying that he would just forcibly grab women by their vagina and kiss them because, hey, I'm a star. They like it. All this with Franken uh, started when Leanne Tweeten, a Los Angeles television host and sportscaster, revealed Thursday that Franken had taken this photo of her while they were on a 2006 USO tour to entertain U.S. troops. She also wrote that Franken, who later became a U.S. senator from Minnesota, two years later, put his hand on the back of my head, mashed his lips against mine, and aggressively stuck his tongue in my mouth during a rehearsal. Now, the Democratic senator swiftly issued an apology to Tweeten, claiming to remember the rehearsal differently. I certainly don't remember the rehearsal for the skit in the same way, but I send my sincerest apologies to Leanne. Franken issued a second statement. Later, much more detail on his Facebook page, uh, one that she later said that she accepted. Now, the reason this is also blown up, uh, Franken also called for a Senate ethics investigation. Now, Mitch McConnell, the majority leader, he also uh, called for that to happen, which is very interesting because uh, now he wants to lead on that. Really? Now, Mitch McConnell also said that this cannot be tolerated. But this is the same Mitch McConnell who endorsed Donald Trump after he was heard on tape talking about sexually assaulting women. Yeah. Is that like a different standard? Now, White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders, she told reporters Thursday a formal inquiry would be an appropriate action. The same Sarah Huckabee Stan Sanders who stood from that podium and said the 14 women accusing Donald Trump of sexual assault were all lying. Amber. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, one, I just want to say, I think this is a really hard time right now for survivors of sexual assault and um, sexual harassment. So shout out to y'all. Like, I, this news cycle has been very hard to look at these accounts back to back, for even for myself. And two is I'm, I'm really disturbed right now by the fact that we're treating sexual harassment as if it is a um, partisan issue. It is something that literally most, like, it is a sweeping issue across this country. And I'm really disappointed in progressive communities for not speaking out against Al Franken as well. He has said time and time that he is a supporter of Planned Parenthood, a supporter of women's health, and that has proven to not be true. Even in reading those statements, he's starting every statement with a disqualifying sentence. It was meant to be funny, but I don't remember it this way, but and what needs to be said is I am sorry I will not do this again and I will work to make sure other people do not perform in the same way. Uh, again, and right now con Amber, Congress cannot be trusted to handle this by themselves. Amber, Amber's dead on. I mean, I, I'm sick of the partisanship that's involved in this, in this conversation because I don't care if it's Republican or Democrat. Policy's policy, but to, to, to look at, to conflate the immoral act of sexual assault and sexual harassment with politics is, is troubling, right? Really? Every anybody that does not fully admonish whoever does what, fully, regardless of party, unacceptable. Now, Shelly, uh, go to my um, uh, iPad here. Uh, this was what, uh, first of all, remember yesterday, Franken issued two apologies. Uh, the more detailed one was where he said, the first thing I want to do is apologize to Leanne, to everyone else who was part of that tour, to everyone who has worked for me, to everyone I represent, and to everyone who counts on me to be an ally, supportive champion of women. You can go to his Facebook page and read. Uh, it's a much, much longer, longer apology there. Uh, Barbara, what is interesting here, and I tweeted this last night, if you're Sarah Huckabee Sanders, yeah. you better get a stiff drink because that's going to be a bullseye on you today. To have Donald Trump, of all people, mock Al Franken mm. when we have him on tape yes. talking about 
grabbing women by the vagina, yes. forcibly kissing them against their will. Uh, you have sexual predator in chief right. yeah. trying to mock somebody else. And then Sarah Huckabee Sanders says from the White House podium that all 14 women accusing Donald Trump are lying. That's right. And you know, what I think is so important here for everyone to point out, I mean, obviously, if you live in a glass house, you don't throw stones. Mm -hmm. The other reality, too, is this is not about immorality. It's about criminal behavior. Mm -hmm. These are criminal assaults that we're talking mm -hmm. about. Let's be very clear here. And that this is behavior that belongs in the, in the ethics investigation, but let's investigate everybody. Because right. Trump should be under investigation himself. Uh, let's be very clear, there's no time limit on this. He could be investigated by the Congress, by the Senate. He needs to be. And I just think that I'm glad that he's speaking out because he should be saying the same thing that Franklin said at the end of his statement, <laughs> which is investigate me. Yeah. I mean, that's what he should have been saying. And for women out there, this is our critical moment. This is a watershed moment for women, because we're saying it stops now, mm -hmm. that and we're tired of this. This has been generational after generation of women being harassed, made you know, these quid pro quos in order to be promoted, to advance, women just dropping out of whole fields because they're just pissed off right. that they can't operate normally without all of this harassment for men. It is time for a change. I am so glad that women are spe speaking out. Let's lift them up when they speak out. Let's stop, you know, giving them all of this, you know, shade and all of this uh, disbelief and all of this evilness. Let's be very clear that for every person in America, every person in the world, it's time for this to stop. Here's what's interesting. Here's what's in interesting. Um, you had a highly successful TV Ooh. show, Madman. <laughs> that that's that's essentially what the show was about. This 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 whole different era right. that was hugely successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have what I what I talk about is white fear. When I say white fear, um, you talk about in terms of how we're changing demographically in this country. The thing that I keep trying to tell people is. What is unsettling to a lot of people in this country is that it is changing. Yes. That we've yes. been, if people want to be, we have been a white, male, <laughs> dominated huh. society. Now, that's not saying that black men can't do this, Hispanic men, it Asian happened. men, Native American men yeah. can't. But what I'm saying is, what is unsettling, what is unsettling to some of these folks out here is what is changing. It's because I think historically we can't even acknowledge that it wasn't until really the 1970s you had African Americans coming into the workforce. It wasn't until the 1970s that you had women coming into the work workforce. That's right. 1964 Civil Rights Act uh, the, uh, this, uh, discrimination against women was included because the racists from Virginia right. wanted to kill the bill right. by putting women the in. Poison right. bill. So, yes. and I always talk about we've only been technically fully free for yes. 47 years. Well, women on, have technically have been fully Americans in terms of being in these places for the same period of time. Yes. And so the reckoning is that the America that all these folks love, make America great again, that's what's now on trial because you're having to change what has been at the foundation of this that's country because the nation at its core was built for white male landowners. And that's what folks are going to have to understand if this thing goes far deeper than just, well, we can have a couple of classes. Yeah. And right. And it's important to mention, like, even when we talk about communities of color and specifically black communities, this this whole idea of sexual assault, the way you're laying it out in the workplace, is acting like a Jim Crow for lots of women of color, yes. lots of black women, where even though you're being ushered into this split space, you're still being highly discriminated against. Um, we have stories like um, the rape of <clears throat> Racy Taylor. Lots of us don't know that history. Lots of us don't know that Rosa Parks was actually organizing against the sexual assault of black women. It's no, there's 
there's no rec record of this. So yes, white people are not the standard for how black people should treat each other, but there is a, a conversation that can still be had within our communities about what does consent look like, how are we practicing it, and how are we teaching it to black men as well. And this is going to free up not just women, but this is going to free up everybody. We yeah. see this with Terry Crews. Because you have, because you have to, you have to, and and, and even the, the, I think the Terry Crews thing is, is, is also critically important because yeah. Just like women, he literally said, he said, I had to process that quickly. Right. If I react this way, right. everything that I've done to get to this point, yep. I could lose In a if I knock this dude out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so and it's, so it's, it's, it's part of that thing where, where I always say in the workplace, white men get to say whatever they want to say, ain't no thing. But if, but if you're a brother or a sister, hold up, I can't too much bass in my voice. Right. I can't really go at somebody. So, I mean, you literally got to think think about, or I might and some lose, people or... don't have to get punched in the face in the workplace. Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. I was in agreement about the, you know, that's not a partisan issue. I called for Roy Moore to be resigned, you know, long ago. Same thing about Al Franken. This is what we're talking about right now. He needs to resign if we're trying to hold to the same standard. But I think you made a great point about the fact that even though we got our rights, there's still cultural barriers to allowing women coming out. And a lot of Republicans are saying, trying to say, you know, why did it take 40 years for these women to come out against Roy Moore? Because the culture has changed. This is a watershed moment. But, and but I understand it, 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 that they didn't feel comfortable coming out before. And, and, you know, he was, he was very interesting is that, and I know i got to go to a break, uh, when, when Carol Simpson wrote her book, and she yes. talked about all of uh, the gender discrimination and racial discrimination she had, uh, she had to say. Uh, I had some people who said, well, man, uh, when you left, why'd you say some stuff about CNN? I said, because you know what? I said, you don't have to, I said, I I'm tired of somebody thinking, I gotta wait till you 70. Mm -hmm. to put it in the book. I said, right. some stuff, <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I said, because some stuff got to be dealt with now right. mm -hmm. because it has to change now. And sort of, yeah. the, sort of the exact same thing here. I think when you talk about what is happening to women in the workplace and whether it, whether it is severe, yeah. Yes. Or whether it's just sort of in passing, no, you have to contend with that. Here, real quick, real quick, real quick. Yeah, and, but it's, it's deeply cultural, right? We, it's, mm -hmm. The workplace is symptomatic of a deeply cultural... American deep, DNA. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Look at our entertainment. Look at everything that we do. Right. Sexual, the sexualization of women and the de degradation of women yeah, is so embedded in our culture. Right. All right. But men need to take a lead. And then we can see this men with Donald, all stops. these... When men are Got it. talking about what they've done to women, other men need to say, stop that. Gotcha. That's wrong. I, uh, you know, stop that, all that gratuitous, you know, laughing and patting each other on the back. Go, boy. Let me go stop right, that. Let me go right now, though. I got to go to this break. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't no cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.